Hello, we'll be doing the 9.3 notes today, rectangles and squares. So students will be able to solve problems using properties of rectangles and squares. So let's go ahead and go to this GeoGebra activity to fill in our um, the properties of a rectangle. So let's go ahead and check that out. So we need to take a look at the sides as well as the angles and the diagonals. So um, before I press the box for the angles and the diagonals, these sides, we can see that there's little dashes, right? And even, doesn't matter how we move this rectangle, the opposite sides are going to be congruent to one another. So hopefully that was at least a little bit familiar as uh, we have learned about rectangles before, but it's might have been a while. All right, let's take a look at the angles. Well, all the angles are 90 degrees, and no matter where I move it, even super small, it's still going to create that 90 degree angle. Okay, and then let's take a look at the diagonals. So the diagonals, get rid of the angles for a second. Diagonals, once again, they, it looks like they bisect one another as they did with the parallelograms from 9.2, where the eight on this side equals the eight on this side. But if we take a look, they are congruent to one another. So these diagonals are exactly the same length. So on either side, they're exactly the same length. And if we take a look at the angles here, um, we create this isosceles triangle, right? Do you guys see that? We have 64, 64, um, 10 and 10, 64. And then whatever this inside angle is, subtract it from 120, um, 128. Um, but if we take a look at like this larger triangle down at the bottom, we have 26, 26, and then 128 degrees. So, um, and it does bisect, or it doesn't bisect our angles, but it does if you guys take a look here, the angles uh, are equal on opposite sides for both of them. All right, so let's go ahead and fill in this chart. So the opposite sides of a rectangle are both parallel and congruent. So it is important that we do recognize that the opposite sides are parallel, which means a rectangle is a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is kind of like that broader term. And once we get to squares, square is also a form of a parallelogram, but it has um, stricter rules than just the general rules of a parallelogram. All right, so let's go ahead and label these sides. Okay, angles of a rectangle. The angles of a rectangle are each a 90 degree angle. So we can go ahead and put the little boxes to show that they're 90 degrees. All right, and then the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent and bisect each other. So I can draw, I'm do my best to draw these diagonals as well as possible. There we go. And so that means all of these sides of the diagonal are exactly the same. All right, so using the property that says opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent in order to find the perimeter of each shape below. So if we see here, we have like this larger shape, but if I were to, you know, cut this down kind of like that, um, I know that this whole side right? Even though it's kind of cut in the center here, we have two centimeters. I'm going to rewrite it on this side so they're a little bit closer. And two centimeters, which means the entire thing is four centimeters long. So for this one, it doesn't apply as much as number two. As you can see, we have the 3.4 and the 3.7. Um, but we have that four centimeters. So that means both of these sides added up should also be four centimeters long. So that means we're gonna say that this is two centimeters and this is two centimeters. Okay, let's erase some of this extra lines that we have here. Oops. And now we have all the required information. Another way we can double check, so it says that this side is seven centimeters long. Well, if I take two plus three plus two will also give me that seven centimeters long, which is another way to verify this. Uh, the two centimeters, two centimeters will give us the two centimeters, two centimeters. All right, uh, remember that 
to find the perimeter you just add up all the sides together I would suggest starting with one side so three centimeters and just making your way around to make sure you don't miss any numbers especially since you could probably just plug this straight into a calculator for this first one I'll go ahead and write it out so I have three plus two plus two plus two plus seven plus two plus two plus two especially with all those twos you don't want to accidentally miss one so I would just pick a side and just slowly make your way around the shape until you've hit everything and you come back to where you started so adding all those together I end up with 22 centimeters all right so go ahead and take a look at number two try that one out as well as the challenge down here so try two and try three go ahead and pause the video give those ones a shot All right, here's number two and number three. So with number two, we just added up those two sides to get the longer side down at the bottom and then up and down to get the 7.1 centimeters. All right, and then for number three, we were missing a diagonal side. So that one could have been a little bit harder but I noticed that this had a dash and this one also had a dash which means that they had to be the same so therefore I can go about my day and just plugging that five in adding them all together to get 32 inches all right let's go ahead and take a look at four and five so find the variable for each rectangle use the properties that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent and bisect one another so they are all congruent to one another before we can find d and b even though i know it's equal to each of these sides i need to find a first so i'm going to say that a plus 10 is equal to 3a plus 2. and subtract a and i'll subtract 2 so those cancel and i now have 2a equals 8 which will give me a equals 4. Now remember I cannot just say that b and d also equal a because b and d equal the entire side. So what this means is I'm going to have to do 4 plus 10 to figure out what is the length of this top side here. I'll go ahead and highlight it for us. Okay so 4 plus 10 is 14 which means D equals four or B equals fourteen and D equals fourteen. Using both letters. Okay. So A does does not equal fourteen because A is not just a singular side. A had, you know, adding ten, multiply by three, add two, where D and B were just the plain number, so we had to solve. Once we found A, we had to plug it back in. Alright, you guys go ahead and try number five. Zoom in, you guys can see it, pause the video. Alright, and here's number five. So nice thing about this, we didn't necessarily have to plug X back in because we had a singular side and I know that they're all congruent. So therefore Z and Y just equal six. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number or example six. A rectangle has a length of seven centimeters and a width of twenty-four centimeters good and draw a rectangle so 7 and 24 um, find the length of one diagonal hint draw a diagram so really whenever you don't have a diagram we should be drawing the picture all right and so our goal is to figure out what is this diagonal here remember a rectangle makes a 90 degree angle and now I have a right triangle so I can do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals x squared. So this plays back to using that Pythagorean theorem and why we spent so much time with triangles because triangles pop up almost everywhere. All right, let's go ahead and solve this. So I have 49 plus 576 equals x squared. And then if I add them together, I get 625 equals x squared take the square root of both sides and I get x equals 25. Okay, so when we are trying to find the diagonal and we're given just two sides, we are able to do that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about squares a little bit. So the sides of a square are all congruent. 
the angles of a square are all 90 degree angles. And the diagonals of a square are congruent and bisect each other. All right, so very similar to a rectangle, except for all the sides are exactly the same length with one another. And we have our 90 degree angles and our diagonals. Okay. And we do create that 90 degree angle in the center. All right, seven through 11, find the variables of each square. So I'll do seven, eight, nine. I'll let you guys try 10 and 11. So opposite sides are, or all the sides are congruent. Sorry, we're dealing with squares now. So all the sides are congruent, which means W here equals six. All right, three Y plus one also equals six, but I have to do a little extra work to figure out what Y itself actually equals. So I can subtract one, three Y equals five. And five divided by three is not a pretty decimal, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as five over three. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at two X. And so two X equals six. Once again, we have to do a little bit of extra work to figure out what X equals, but not too much extra work. All right, and then with our angles, remember our angles add up to 90 degrees or equal 90 degrees. So I can do 10 Z equals 90 to give me Z equals nine. Okay. Number eight, we have 10 here, which means B also has to equal 10. All right, now we can go ahead and find C here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that Pythagorean theorem. So I'm gonna have 10 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared, which is 100 plus 100 equals C squared, 200 equals C squared. And now we can do the square root of 200. So let's go ahead and create a factor tree. 20 and 10, I can do two and 10. And so I have a pair of tens here, which means C equals two root 10. All right, this is also going back to our special right triangles. So the diagonals of a, a square are nice too, because they bisect our angles. So not only are the angles 90 degrees, but it also bisects them. So that means these are 45 degree angles. So I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means I have my one, 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 root two. The nice thing is, is if you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot remember special right triangles for the life of me, we can always use the Pythagorean theorem. Because as you can see, I used the Pythagorean theorem and got the correct answer. Um, but if you see some of those similarities, just like whenever we talk about, um, what are they? Pythagorean triples, right? When we talk about those Pythagorean triples, of course you can always use the Pythagorean theorem, but if you notice a triple, it kind of makes those problems go a little bit faster, right? So um, I will definitely point those out every time we have to use them, but try and remember those when you are trying these problems on your own. All right, number nine, all the sides equal 20, which means I now have 10 X equals 20, giving me X equals two. And then five Y squared equals 20. Remember we have to get our squared number by itself before we can take the square root. So I have y squared equals four. And I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides to get y equals two. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at 10 and 11. I want you guys to go ahead and try these. Don't forget when you try number 10, remember those special right triangle. All right, there it is. H equals 45 and G equals 11 root two. So I set up that special right triangle. So I just have 11 with the root two right next to it. Oh, and I totally forgot to do number 11 as well. Let me go ahead and write that down. All right, there's number 11. Um, both the sides equal 17. So I just set them equal to 17 and solve for the variable. All right, let's go ahead and head on to the last page of 4.3. 
Example 12. A square has a perimeter of 32 inches. Find the area of the square. Reminder, area equals s squared. And remember also the perimeter. Yes, you're adding all the sides together. Um, but with the square, since all the sides are the same, it's going to be 4 times s. So whatever that side length is, just like we do over here, whatever that side length is, multiply it by 4. All right, so let's see. We know that the perimeter is 32 inches, 4 times the side length. So if I go ahead and divide by 4, I can tell you that 8 equals s. Now I can go ahead and plug this right in to my equation. So area equals 8 squared, which will be area equals 64, and then let's include those units, inches squared. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So we want to find the perimeter of the square below. Remember, it's 1, 1, 1 root 2, which means all of my sides are 10. So using those special right triangles is very, very helpful in this case. So if I do 4 times 10, just like we talked about with number 12, 4 times whatever the side length is, we're going to get 40 units uh, for this perimeter of the square. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at 14. Given that a rectangle and a square both have a perimeter of 24 millimeters, if the length and the width of the rectangle is 3 centimeters and 9 centimeters, then which has the larger area, the square or the rectangle? So let's go ahead and draw our picture. Remember, if we do not have one, we always need to draw one. My square kind of looks like a rectangle. But I know my perimeter of each is 24 millimeters. And it doesn't give me the side lengths of the square because we are able to find that. But with the rectangle, there's probably many ways that we can get there. So we want to go ahead and include that. Okay, so perimeter, remember that is 24 equals 4s. We go and divide by 4 on each of these. So my side lengths are 6. So I know all my sides are 6. Okay, now we can go ahead and find the area. So the area for the square will be 6 squared, which will give me 36, and we have millimeters. I just realized I only put 1m, but so we have 36 millimeters here. And then my area of a rectangle is just base times height, so I'll do 3 times 9, so my area equals 27 millimeters. So therefore, the area of the square is larger. Okay, so just because the perimeter is the same does not mean the area is the same. It really all depends on what kind of shape you're making. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this challenge. I want you guys to actually pause the video and try this challenge out on your own. See how well you do. All right, let's go ahead and go through it together. So consider the figure below which is formed by a large square with each side of 16 units, a medium-sized square, and a smaller square, where the side lengths of 6 units, all 3 of the squares share the same center. Alright, so we, we want to find the area of the large square. So, of course, that's our large square here, and it tells us those are the 16. So, I can do 16 squared which is going to give me 256 units squared. Okay, find the area of the medium size square. So if we take a look here, we have our medium square right here. And I want to know, I need to know at least one side, right? Because it's a square. So I need to know one side. So if I take a look here, I have 6 and then I have 2. So I know from this point all the way down, that's going to be 8. Well, I still have this area up here. Since it's a square, I know that we are also adding on 2. So I have um, essentially 2 around my small square, right? Because we have this small square in the center. Around this small square, I kind of have this border of 2 units all the way around it. So therefore, all the way across my medium square, is 10 units long. So I know that my medium square is 100 units squared. Okay. I did 10 squared for that one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this stuff. It's a little bit cleaner. So I want to know what is this empty space? 
So like, what is the area of this empty space? And how we're gonna do that is we already know that the area of my large square is 256. And I also just found the area of my medium square, so that's this, this whole thing, even with that tiny square in the center. The medium square includes this whole area right here. And so this pink, let's go ahead and highlight the whole thing. Pink is the whole thing, and then we also have that blue in the center, right? And so if I wanna know just the area of, the area is just shaded pink. It does say it with the diagonal regions in it. Now that it's highlighted, it's a little bit harder to see, but you can still kind of see them. That diagonal region, essentially, all I wanna do is take out this blue area. And so if I take out the blue area, I'm just gonna be left with the pink. Well, now remember the entire, or the outside of the pink. Remember, the entire pink is this blue. Kinda did that backwards, didn't I? I'll go ahead and label it, so this pink and blue. So the entire pink area is 256 units. That blue area is 100. So if I wanna know just the border, right? And then I'm going to take 256 and subtract the 100. I'm going to subtract that blue square. So I'm left with 156 units squared. So just the diagonal part where I put that like green circle um, square type thing, that is 156 units squared. So the entire large square with everything still inside it's 256. The center is 100. And so take out that blue center and I'm left with 156 units. All right, and that is the end of 9.3. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask your teacher and have a wonderful rest of your day.